Alexander had just led one of the greatest campaigns in human history, winning victory after victory. But what stood in front of Alexander now was to be his toughest campaign yet, as he invaded Central Asia and India, where his tactical brilliance would be put to the test and his army would face giants, the likes of which the Greeks had never seen before. After Darius' death, the Persian Empire collapsed, the last remnants trying to be pulled together by the usurper Bessus, who was fleeing from Alexander. On the march towards Bactria, a plot against his life was revealed. One of his officers, Philotas, failed to alert Alexander, an action which he would be executed for. The death of Philotas necessitated the death of his father, Parmenion, who had been charged with guarding the treasury at Ecbatana, and was assassinated at Alexander's command. This campaign, initially against Bessus, turned into a grand tour of Central Asia. Alexander founded a series of new cities, all called Alexandria. In 329 BC, Bessus was betrayed to Ptolemy. Bessus was then flogged and executed by order of Alexander. Alexander subsequently subjugated Sogdia, winning several battles against various peoples. At the Jaxartes River, he fought the Saka, a nomadic people that had raided the region for years. The Saka occupied the northern bank of the Jaxartes, confident that they could beat Alexander's men if they attempted to cross. But the Greeks, using powerful catapults and siege bows, were able to force the Saka from the banks making it easy for the Macedonians to cross the Jaxartes. In all likelihood, the Saka would normally have withdrawn at this point. However, Alexander wanted to neutralize the threat to his borders and was not about to let the enemy get away. He ordered a battalion of mounted spearmen to advance and provoke an attack. The nomads, not recognizing this move for what it was, immediately attacked Alexander's vanguard. Once the horse archers were engaged, they were vulnerable to an approach by the Macedonian infantry. The nomads had trapped themselves in between Alexander's army. The Saka tried to escape to the wings of the Macedonian lines, but were ultimately trapped, inflicting a crippling defeat, allowing Alexander to finally head south. At Maracata, Alexander accidentally killed Clytus the Black during a violent drunken altercation. Clytus being the man who had saved his life at the Granicus six years earlier. He would marry Roxana in 327 BC, which helped cement his relations with his new Central Asian satraps. During this time, Alexander adopted some elements of Persian dress and customs at his court. This was one aspect of Alexander's broad strategy, aimed at securing the aid and support of the Persian upper class. The Greeks, however, viewed this as an abandonment of Greek culture and led to resentment among his army. Alexander then began his march towards India. While on the march, Alexander sent ambassadors ahead to the various tribes of the former satrap of Gandhar, asking them to come to him and submit to his authority. Taxila and a number of other princes came to him, bringing gifts and paying tribute to the Macedonians. At the end of spring 327 BC, Alexander began his campaign into the Kofan Valley. He would win several decisive victories, subjugating the Aspasians, which secured his supply line, which had previously been stretched. At Aragaeum, Alexander would face the king of the Gurians, who had assembled a larger force than that of the Macedonians. Alexander divided his army into three parts, with Ptolemy taking up the left, Leonatus was ordered to take up the right flank, and Alexander took up the center, opposed to the Gurians. Alexander sent Ptolemy and Leonatus to their respective flanks by routes that the Gurians could not observe, thus hiding the flanks of his army from the Gurians. Alexander's contingent was comparatively small, and his plan was to lure them out and to fight them while Leonatus and Ptolemy took their flanks and encircled them. As expected, the Gurians attacked Alexander's small contingent in the center, 
When the time was ripe, Ptolemy and Leonatus launched the ambush. They faced rough fighting, but were both able to achieve a decisive victory. Once the Gurians realized the dire state of the battle, they surrendered. The Macedonians captured roughly 40,000 Gurians. Continuing along, Alexander defeated the Assanians at the sieges of Masaga, Aornis, and Nysa, successfully subjugating the Kofan Valley. He would then cross the Indus to begin campaigning in the Punjab region. In the spring of 326 BC, Alexander arrived on the north banks of the Hydaspes River, and the king of the Paravas, Porus, drew up on the south bank in an attempt to repeal any crossing by Alexander. The Hydaspes River was deep and fast moving. Alexander knew that a direct approach had little chance of success and tried to find alternative fords. Eventually, Alexander found and used a suitable crossing about 17 miles or 27 kilometers upstream from his camp. He left his general Craterus behind with most of the army to make sure Porus would not find out about his plan. Under the cover of darkness, Alexander quietly moved his part of the army upstream, then traversed the river in utmost secrecy. Once Porus got wind of his opponent's maneuver, he sent a small cavalry and chariot force under his son, hoping that he would be able to prevent the crossing. Though Alexander had already crossed, and was advancing towards the location of Porus's camp, with all his horsemen and archers, leaving his phalanx to follow up behind. Upon meeting with young Porus's force, his horse archers showered the enemy with arrows, while his heavy cavalry immediately charged. The suddenness had left the Indian chariots useless, as they become immobilized in the mud near the shore of the river. His small force was completely routed. As news reached the king, he understood that Alexander had crossed to his side of the river and turned to face him with the best part of his army, leaving behind a small contingent to disrupt the landing of Craterus' force. Eventually, the two forces met and arrayed themselves for battle. The Indians were poised with cavalry on both flanks, while their center comprised of infantry with war elephants stationed in front of them. Porus himself fighting atop his tallest elephant. Alexander, noticing that Porus's position was strongest in the center, decided to attack first with his cavalry on the flanks, setting his horse archers to harass the Indian left wing. His companion cavalry then attacked the outnumbered Indian cavalry, with Alexander himself leading the charge. The rest of the Indian cavalry moved to the aid of their hard-pressed kinsmen. Baconus' squadron promptly followed their movement and attacked them from the rear, encircling the Indian horsemen, which were subsequently routed and fled to the safety of their elephants. The war elephants now came into conflict with the Macedonian phalanx. The powerful beasts caused heavy losses among the Macedonian foot trampling and disorganizing their dense lines. Nevertheless, the Macedonian infantry resisted the attack, with light infantry tossing javelins at the elephant's eyes and the riders on their back, while the heavy infantry struck at their legs with two-sided axes and swords. The elephants were eventually repulsed and fled back through their own lines. The maddened animals wrecked havoc, trampling many of their own infantry and cavalry. Finally, the Macedonian phalanx locked their shield in advance upon the confused enemy mass, while the Macedonian cavalry charged from the rear, putting the entire Indian army to rout. Meanwhile, Craterus and his force had succeeded in crossing the river, and arriving just at the right moment to conduct a thorough pursuit on the fleeing Indians. Throughout the battle, Alexander observed with growing admiration the valor of Porus. Hoping to save the life of such a competent leader and warrior, Alexander offered him surrender, allowing him to retain his lands. Following the battle, Alexander founded two cities, called Alexandria Bucephalus and Alexandria Nicaea, the latter the site of the battle and named after the Greek word for victory, and the former on the opposite side of the bank to honor his horse Bucephalus, who fell during the battle. 
east of Porus's kingdom, near the Ganges River, was the powerful Nanda Empire. Fearing the prospects of facing other powerful Indian armies, and exhausted by years of campaigning, his army mutinied, refusing to march further east. Alexander, using the maps of the Greeks, thought that the world ended a mere thousand kilometers away at the edge of India. He therefore spoke to his army and tried to persuade them to march further. But Alexander, seeing the unwillingness of his men, agreed and turned back. Alexander commissioned a fleet to explore the Persian Gulf under his admiral Nearchus. Alexander then sent some of his forces back with Craterus taking a northern route, while he led the rest of his forces back to Persia by the southern route through the Gadosian Desert. In the desert crossing, Alexander's army took enormous casualties from both hunger and thirst. Discovering that many of his satraps and military governors had misbehaved in his absence, Alexander executed several of them as examples on his way to Susa. As a gesture of thanks, he paid off the debts of his soldiers, announced that he would send overaged and disabled veterans back to Macedon, led by Craterus. His troops misunderstood his intention and mutinied at the town of Opus. They refused to be sent away and criticized his adoption of Persian customs, dress, and the introduction of Persian officers and soldiers into Macedonian units. After three days, unable to persuade his men to back down, Alexander reconciled. The Macedonians quickly begged forgiveness, which Alexander accepted, and held a banquet with several thousand of his men in an attempt to craft the lasting harmony between his Macedonian and Persian subjects. Alexander also held a mass marriage of his senior officers to Persian and other noble women at Susa. Afterwards, Alexander traveled to Ekbatana to retrieve the bulk of the Persian treasury. There, his closest friend Hephaestan died of illness. Hephaestan's death devastated Alexander. He ordered the preparation of a funeral in Babylon, along with a decree for public mourning. On the evening of May 29th, Alexander organized a banquet for his army to celebrate the end of the campaign of India and the onset of the invasion of the Arabian Peninsula. But shortly after, Alexander developed a fever, which worsened until he was unable to speak. On June 11th, 323 BC, Alexander died in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar II in Babylon at age just 32. Alexander's death was so sudden that when reports of his death reached Greece, they were not immediately believed. Alexander had no obvious or legitimate heir, his son Alexander IV by Roxanne being born after Alexander's death. After the assassination of Perdiccas in 321 BC, Macedonian unity collapsed and 40 years of war between the successors ensued. In the process, both Alexander IV and Philip III were murdered. Never has one man had such an impact on history. In just 12 years, he had conquered one of the largest empires in human history, stretching from Greece to India. A feat which would forever immortalize him in the West as Alexander the Great.